Hey guys, today we are going to talk about how to uh, think about the trajectory of a bullet out of a gun. Um, this represents the trajectory that most people kind of assume a bullet does when it leaves a firearm towards its target, meaning it leaves the barrel, follows a straight line, hits its target. That's kind of what it is doing. We're going to talk about why it's not actually what it's doing. As a bullet leaves the end of the barrel, gravity starts affecting it. So the bullet starts dropping. So your target, if it's directly in line with the barrel, your bullet is going to hit low. How do you account for that? How do you fix this situation? Well, if you've played baseball or tennis or anything that involves a ball, basketball, you know that as the ball leaves your hand, it starts to fall. Gravity affects it much sooner than it would a bullet because it's a slower moving object. So in order to get a ball further, well, you throw it higher, right? So if we're going to use a gun, the bullet is leaving at a much faster pace, which means gravity is still affecting it, but it's affecting it much less than it would a, a slow moving ball because it's moving so fast. Okay, so if we've adjusted the angle, so now the bullet is moving up, the bullet is going to move up, but gravity starts to affect it, right? So that brings it back down, kind of like that, all right? And now it's going to hit a target somewhere out here. But even this isn't accurate, because as it affects by gravity, the trajectory of the bullet, once it hits that target, it's still falling, right? So there's a way we can think about this in cartoon dimensions that will make everything very easy, even though this is not quite what's happening. What is happening is the bullet is leaving the gun and it's dropping, all right? But here's our cartoon simulation, which ends up being way easier for us to think about. I have now changed the trajectory of the bullet to an arc. And for us math nerds, we're gonna call this a parabola, okay? The bullet leaves the barrel of the gun right here, and this no longer is our target, this is it hitting the ground, all right? Let's pretend we live on a flat plane, or maybe you're a flat earther and we do live on a flat plane. Whatever you wanna think about for today, we're on a flat plane. Um, there's no hills, there's no obstructions, it's just as far as the eye can see, emptiness. The bullet leaves the gun, gravity starts affecting it, hits the ground. Eventually gravity forces it down to here and hits the ground, okay? What does this mean for us? If we just assume that that's what's going on, we want to arc it further than where it hit before, so we are gonna tilt it up. So now it's going up and it hits the ground later at a different point. You'll notice that this line right here on my mat connects to the trajectory of our bullet perfectly flat but it connects at two different points of this trajectory. What this means for us is because we've tilted the bullet upward and it's going to curve for us now as gravity starts to affect it and bring it back down to the ground, it's going to pass through this part of the physical plane that we're on, but it's also going to pass through this part of the physical plane that we're on at an equal level. Okay, and this is really cool for us because what we can do here is we can set up a target here and let's call this 12 yards because we're using a pistol. And you can set up a target here at 50 yards and you can have your 12 yards zero for your optic and bullseye a 12 yard target. And as it passes through the paper target, the bullet is rising still because your optic is zeroed in a way that the entire time it was leaving the barrel, it was climbing until it met the target at 12 yards, and it kept climbing until gravity overcame it and started making it fall again. And at 50 yards, it hits another target that we've placed at 50 yards. Even if you can't see this target, if you've placed it directly behind this target, It'll pass through the first target, start climbing, climbing, climbing. Gravity starts overcoming the, the movement of the, the bullet and it starts bringing it back down and it bullseyes 
the 50 yard target. As long as there's no wind or weather affecting the variation of where the bullet goes, the only thing affecting it is your aim and the arc caused by gravity. You're going to get a 12 yard hit and a 50 yard hit perfectly, and then later it hits the ground. So just by knowing that, we can do all sorts of cool math. We can figure out how fast the bullet's moving. This is with a nine millimeter bullet, 115 grain. Uh, we can figure out exactly what to zero our gun to so that we can hit at two different points. And we're gonna do this, think about this line that I created, and I created it here at 12 and here at 50, all right? But as I change the trajectory of the gun and the zero, the line becomes wider, right? Now it's here and here, and this might be 10 yards and 75 yards, right? You can look up charts for each bullet and each weight and figure out exactly what yardage will zero to what. So I use nine millimeter, 115 grain bullets and when I zero, I zero for 12 yards. And the reason I do that is because I've looked up these charts and it says 12 and 50 yards. Handguns aren't really designed to go out to a large, a large distance. 50 yards is pretty good for a handgun, but even at a 50 yard zero, so 12 and 50, if I shoot out to say 75 yards, I can still hit out here because like I said, if this is my 50 yards, there's still distance after that 50 yards where this is still falling and hasn't hit the ground yet. So even though I've missed the center of my bullseye at 75 yards, I might hit here just one or two inches low, right? And that's good enough. Like this is, this is a good system. So you can figure out the trajectory for each of your bullets, each of your grains, and figure out what zero is best for you. But as long as we think about it in this cartoonish um, arc-like look where the bullet is rising and falling, even though it's not actually doing that, uh, you, can, you can understand a lot more about the physics of what you're doing. So if you have any questions that I haven't answered, drop a comment. I'll respond. And thanks for watching, guys.